uh, thank you, Abel, for the kind introduction. And of course, thank you very much to the organizer to give me the opportunity here to present some of our research and to give this keynote lecture. And I wondered a little bit about that. I was invited to give a keynote lecture here because my name is not really connected to green chemistry. We are working somewhere in a triangle between organic chemistry, NMR spectroscopy, and biocatalysis. Uh, and of course, we are making several things which are somehow devoted to green chemistry. And when I got the request about the, this keynote lecture here, I thought, hmm, what might I present? And there I came to the idea uh, to think about my administrative job at University of Vienna, and there I'm responsible uh, for the teaching curricula. And having then the, the topic here to, to have uh, green chemistry or the future of green, green chemistry, I just entitled this talk Green Chemistry and Sustainability in Education. And just listening to the, the other keynote lectures this morning, I've realized that there are really different ideas of education. Ingrid said, okay, we have to, to educate uh, the younger people to change the, the solvents, going away from benzene and from chloroform to, to other solvents. Okay. Um, uh, to, uh, just to change to, to water. And now Stephen gave us uh, an introduction about the, the education in, uh, uh, in Australia about green chemistry. And if I got it really right, uh, you try to make experts on green chemistry, which are able to communicate with, with, uh, with other experts then. But I had a, a somehow different idea to involve green chemistry here uh, to, uh, to our curricula. Uh, I thought, how should it be organized uh, to make no experts from, for green chemistry, um, but to educate all uh, students and then also younger pupils about green chemistry and how might that be involved into uh, the curricula. And thinking about that, I just thought about uh, the way for normal inventions or discoveries from the year where we, where we have it made, somewhere in the lab, being happy about uh, our progress, then coming to Coming to, do you still hear me? Yes, very uh, wonderful. Uh, coming then finally to, to organized curricula probably all over the world. And thinking about uh, inventions in chemistry, you have them, you present them on meetings within one or two years. And of course you write some papers, some publications over one year or probably five years if you have then some, some further developments. And thinking about that, you will involve that to your own teaching. You will teach your own students uh, about your ideas after three or six years. And of course, if it is then a, a good idea, uh, important reaction, for example, new reaction in organic chemistry, uh, it will find then after around 10 years uh, to specialized uh, textbooks and after approximately 20 years to, to generalized textbooks. So the students are aware of that, uh, but that is not fixed in curricula. The universities writing their curricula, summing up new uh, topics are quite slow. They are behind the textbooks because they refer somehow to what is taught uh, in, in other parts of the world. So that lasts from the first idea 20 to 40 years and then uh, just uh, speaking together uh, with other universities about unified uh, curricula that lasts even longer, 30 to, uh, to 50 years. And if it is a 
basic idea, then it probably will find also uh, the way to general teaching concepts in secondary school. And I think green chemistry is an important idea that should be focused in curricula at universities and in curricula at secondary schools. But let's take a look what happened with green chemistry in the last decades. And taking a look to the literature, you will find, okay, green chemistry came up in, uh, as an idea, as a defined idea in the 1970s. Uh, and of course, it was there presented in meetings, in publications, and it is also cited. So it is used as a term in all the, the publications which we, which we use and which we read. In the 1980s, there were first ideas about teaching, first teaching probably in universities uh, from guys, from colleagues who were interested in green chemistry, who would like to put that subject uh, to the, not to the curricula, but to their certain lecture courses. And so it finds then, as before, the idea is a way to specialize textbooks, and now we can find that also in organic chemistry, also in, in spectroscopy and biochemistry, in generalized textbooks. And as we heard from, from Stephen before, it finds the way to curricula, um, but not all over the world, in all universities, that is in some certain centers, actually. So let's take a look to the future. What will happen? Where will we go to as a general teaching concept in universities and as a general teaching concept in secondary schools? And now I'm, of course, somehow focused to the teaching concept in Europe and uh, I will uh, use the, the European organization of teaching in university. We have there the bachelor program, which are six semesters, three years at the beginning of the study. Then we have the, the master program, uh, another four semesters. Uh, and then you finish with the, the master title and can go to the PhD program. And I have separated uh, the, the idea of teacher education. But let's start at the moment and think about the bachelor program. What do we have there? What might be important in the first three years to teach to all students in chemistry and related topics about green chemistry? And we have there the 10 or uh, I use 12 principles of green chemistry. And I think it should be important to have mandatory lecture courses. Of course, not plenty of time, but in one or two semesters, a teaching course for two or three hours. Uh, just giving an overview of what does green chemistry mean? What are the principles of green chemistry and how can we involve that in all the other things which we learn in all the other lecture courses about organic, inorganic, physical chemistry and so on. But that should not be standalone a theoretical concept. We also should involve that to our lab courses, and I wrote here mandatory lab courses. Of course, I have no idea how a lab course of green chemistry should look like for an undergraduate student, but I know several concepts in our own teaching courses about organic chemistry where we can involve the idea of green chemistry and where we can teach the students how to use green chemistry in organic chemistry, for example, in comparison to older reactions, to older systems producing plenty of waste, um, using plenty of energy, and now we have better possibilities uh, to, to do such, uh, such reactions um, and can use the concepts of sustainability and green chemistry. 
So we get a broad education for old students having the idea of green chemistry in mind and we give them the possibility to uh, develop that concept in their further study and then later on in their jobs. And the next step would be the master program. And in the master program, of course, the students specialize. They get uh, from chemistry to biochemistry or to material science or to food chemistry. And so we also have to involve their uh, election duty lecture courses about application of the known green chemistry concept from the, the bachelor program. And that is also an important step then to speak with the colleagues of uh, certain specialized areas how to involve green chemistry. I think that's quite easy for our colleagues from, from biochemistry. They have these ideas in mind. They argue uh, with their own ideas uh, in, in the same manner. And sometimes they also use the word or the, the expression green chemistry. But uh, speaking with our colleagues from material science, uh, they have completely different ideas in mind, but they have the same problems. They also produce waste. They also have to use uh, a high amount of, uh, of energy um, you, uh, working with their materials. And so we have to speak with these colleagues to uh, put our ideas from green chemistry, not our ideas, the ideas from green chemistry, also to the curricula from colleagues who are not directly involved in this topic. And of course, we have then plenty of successful students of the master program, and they will go to the, to the PhD program. And they have then to apply these ideas on green chemistry in their own research. And we should uh, press them to use that idea in, uh, of green chemistry, not as a target, as an only target, but having their own target in mind uh, or in front of their eyes and then using the, the concept of green chemistry uh, to get to the targets, to involve all the ideas, uh, what they have learned before, um, and use that then in their, uh, in their applications. And the only way to, to get that uh, formulating assessment criteriums uh, for the thesis that there also have to be I the idea of sustainability be involved in the argumentation of the development what or which has been made then during this thesis. So that is the the education in or for the for the colleagues for the students who would like to go to industry or to the academic world afterwards, but we have also a large number of students who would like to get a teacher. They will or they make a teacher education, and this is normally as I've drawn here the last point then in a long long list. But I think that cannot be the last point uh, in a long list speaking about the idea of green chemistry. So I separated that a little bit and put that here also to the top, but on a little bit different point of view. What education do we have to make for, or what teacher education do we have for, uh, to make for, for future teachers? And I think they should have also the, uh, the basic ideas of the 12 principles of green chemistry. And they should also, with it, the same mandatory lecture courses and lab courses as the bachelor students do. Just to, to absorb the idea of green chemistry, the concept of green chemistry, and the general concept of sustainability. But we cannot leave them alone with these ideas uh, of uh, green chemistry. We have to give them the, the concepts to teach students. So we need 
educational concepts for uh, teacher education here and uh, we have to uh, to design experiments which can be used for pupils uh, to learn something about green chemistry. And that leads me to the next step. That leads me to the step, what do we teach or what do we have to teach to pupils at a secondary school about green chemistry? What should be taught there um, for the whole population of the next generations? And here I have written a list uh, or, or a transparency general education concept for secondary schools. And of course, we have to start sometime after the, the primary school then for all pupils. And I think we cannot argue at the beginning with green chemistry. The uh, pupils at that uh, stage of education have no idea about chemistry. They have to learn it at school. But we can speak about sustainability in everyday life. And that is something where pupils, even at that age, uh, have a good idea about because that what they use in, in their everyday life, they probably produce waste, they probably uh, use uh, energy in, in, in a high amount. Um, and so we should focus then on an economical uh, use of commonplace chemicals. And here on one hand side, I have a drop of fuel, which is in principle the, the energy behind the fuel, the use of energy in all the, mm, these things, what they do in all the, the processes which they make. And on the other hand side, uh, that's not really good to see, that's a, a detergent for, for uh, dishwashing. Um, I use that as a, as a symbol for uh, a critical use of detergents. And there came to my mind, I'm not at all an expert about uh, experiments for pupils, but there came to my mind um, to, to design experiments how much of these detergents have to be used to clean uh, um, dirty things from the desk, uh, from from the tables, uh, just to to get an idea. We have to uh, to focus uh, on on a sustainable use of chemicals, and that's then the the point where chemistry comes into the education. These are chemicals, and there we should even involve the word chemicals then uh, to the pupils. But pupils are later on, for us, divided into two groups. And on one hand side, I have the group of pupils with interest in natural science. And they will have a focus then, even at a secondary school, on the, the topics on natural science. And I think there we should define in the future basic principles of green chemistry for pupils in the age 16, 17, probably 18 years old, which cannot be, uh, or which cannot uh, uh, think about the basic 12 principles of uh, green chemistry, but how to reduce that, or how it is possible to reduce that uh, for the uh, for the younger pupils, what can be taught to them, because probably they will be the, the chemists of the next generation. And there we have to internalize the meaning and the implication of sustainability to their mind. But of course, you know, not all the, the pupils, not all the younger uh, colleagues uh, at school are interested in chemistry and in natural science. There are pupils with other interests. I fear draw, uh, just copied a guy making music and not being interested in, in chemistry and in physics and in biology. And there we have to try to internalize the benefits of sustainability and green chemistry, not in detail, but as a general concept, because Taking a look to their mind, 
we actually we see when we speak about chemistry, something like that. Pollution, probably explosions, that's what pupils have in mind about chemistry and that's what they keep in mind because they are never additionally taught anything about the, the real background of chemistry. Uh, and, and we ask our, our colleagues today, which are not from, from natural science about chemistry, they will say, okay, it smells and it is dirty and it makes pollution and probably it explodes sometimes. So we have to educate the next generation that that is not the way here uh, in chemistry, but we should focus there as a byproduct of teaching green chemistry. Another idea of chemistry, and I have not drawn here any benefits, I just took a nice picture of some flasks. Of course, we cannot use this principle or one principle all over the world because we have different environments all over the world. We have, for example, industrialized areas where most of us come from and so we have mainly our ideas about these regions. But we have also large areas where we, we have an agricultural environment, uh, we have uh, hot and humid environments, we have dry environments, um, we have uh, cities or, or regions with a high population density and we have countries with low population density. And uh, thinking about the, the uh, people living in these areas, they have completely different problems and they should have completely different ideas how to use green chemistry for their problems. And we should involve that also in the education for the next generation. Uh, so we have no chance to use only one concept uh, for green chemistry because one global concept for green chemistry will for sure fail. Not everybody can use that, what we define for industrial areas with a high population density. Uh, so we have to plan our education to coordinate our education with respect to national, political, cultural and environmental frames. And I will concentrate now on the environmental frames as an example uh, what different topics might be involved uh, in just uh, make a, uh, a coordination of our curricula. And as I mentioned, we are here from industrial areas, from industrial countries with a high population density. And we formulated uh, these 12 principles of green chemistry on the basis of our problems. We used uh, all the, the uh, ideas which we developed in using chemistry over the last 30, 40, 50 years and formulated then these 12 principles and we have these 12 principles in principle by far equal. But taking a look to, to other countries from other regions in the world, they have completely different ideas. And I remember a meeting where I've been three months ago that was in, in Bangkok, in Thailand. And uh, that is, of course, uh, a hot, humid climate and we have a strong agricultural region uh, around the large city of Bangkok. And I remember a poster which I saw there from a PhD student. And that PhD student was speaking uh, about a fruit. That fruit is called mangosteen. I'd never seen that before. I never ate that before. Probably you know that or some of you know that uh, it tastes very well. But it has a very, very thick peeling. 
And this student, this PhD student, uh, thought about the concept, how to use this peeling for different purposes, what might be made out of the waste from a strong agricultural region. And I think that is a point which might be, not which might be, which should be in a, in a, in a higher uh, focus in hot and humid climate, so there we, we should focus on, uh, um, on all the natural resources which are present in these areas. But on the other hand side, there are not only uh, hot and humid areas, there are also dry areas. And I've copied here uh, a map from the internet about, uh, or, or which shows the, the dry areas uh, of the world. Uh, and some of them are also in, un, in industrialized countries, but here is a, a large belt north of Africa, then here to, to Asia. And there are uh, several problems uh, in these areas uh, with industrialization, with agricultural point of view. Uh, so uh, there we really should think about how can green chemistry uh, be used as a chance for a further development in, in these areas. And there we are again at the problem which we had in the morning or which we discussed in the morning about the solvent because in that area water is uh, a solvent which has to be used uh, only in smaller amount because it is not really very well available. So that leads me to a kind of take home message because um, I would like not to start but to bring to your, to your minds the idea how to coordinate uh, the education at different universities. So take home the conclusions from this conference and from all the other conferences and meetings which you uh, use it. Discuss it with respect to your own environmental frame with your colleagues and try to introduce the concept, uh, concepts uh, into your curricula. So contact the, the, the colleagues which are responsible for the formation of curricula in your home countries and put the ideas to their mind or try to, to get into the commission speaking about the curricula and try to focus then green chemistry in specialized lecture courses or uh, as a part of still existing uh, lecture courses. And so we can take then a look to the future which I had here with a question mark at the beginning. So probably we have then in 10, 15 or 20 uh, years a general worldwide teaching concepts of green chemistry for universities and 10 years later a general worldwide teaching concept for secondary school. And with this idea I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Okay, do we have any questions? I'm John Glasser, I'm with the uh, US EPA. Uh, a couple of questions or a couple of thoughts I have. Uh, one, uh, there has been some effort in the US with regard to the directions that you're talking about. One of the people that I know uh, who has done this is at the University of uh, uh, Scranton, mm -hmm. who has a very active site Mm -hmm. and people who can link your ideas with that might mm -hmm. have some great uh, merges of information. Secondly, uh, it strikes me as uh, I was trained uh, in organic chemistry using micro techniques mm -hmm. and it's, it strikes me as that maybe micro techniques today might be highly useful in teaching our, our students in terms of process intensification. Just a couple of ideas. Yes, thank, thank you very much. I think you are entirely right with both points. 
uh, when I prepared the lecture course, I took a look how is green chemistry taught all over the world and just scanned with Google through the internet. And by far 90% of the curricula I found are here in the US and the rest of the world is um, a little bit behind that, uh, that ideas which are here uh, really on the way to the curricula. So we should take a look to the, to the US um, how to organize that. And the second one is of course right, when I remember my education, we had large amounts of half a liter or one liter reactions in organic chemistry. And today or uh, in recent years, we work with 25 milliliters or probably 50 milliliters. So we reduce the, the, the size of the, uh, the experiments dramatically, but the experiments are still the same and we have not involved the idea of sustainability and green chemistry uh, in that part of education. We just tell the students, make it in a smaller amount. Uh, we would like to reduce waste and of course costs. I have another question. And this is, um, I like your idea of customizing green chemistry programs because I agree one global concept will not work because we are all different. But how what are your thoughts to get a consistent message out there, what we understand with respect to green chemistry? And my second question is, how do you involve, or how you see, what are your thoughts with getting engineering involved? Because I personally think that green chemistry alone is not the way to go, mm. but it really needs to go hand in hand with engineering mm. and engineered uh, greener solutions. Mm. Uh, to the first question, I thought about that, but I have no real good idea. And I think we can produce or generate just a, a general concept only in discussion of several ideas. So uh, I avoided somehow to, to present here a, a key concept for that, uh, but I, I asked uh, here just to take home your message and to discuss it with your colleagues. That was uh, in principle, or that is in principle, the answer to that question. And to the second part, you are also entirely right, um, but we actually we teach chemistry not only for chemistry students, we teach it for engineers, we teach it for biology students, for nutritional science students, and so on, for physics uh, students, and we also so should involve the idea of green chemistry or more of the word sustainability there in, in uh, that area also for, for these students in particular uh, for the engineers uh, that they have a, a good basis for discussion then when they are for example in your company. Thank you very much. Thank you.